Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial today and this is going to be something where we create an indicator UI in the middle that when we left click it'll circle around, if we drop that left click it will go back and turn off and then we can do some piece of code interaction with the Unity event and I will show you that we can create that with a simple script to be able to control if we want a sound effect if we want to update in this example that I've got here is an update, it's like a picture of a drink and then that will be the thirst that you have when you're doing it. You can get the scripts and this entire project on my Patreon if you become a supporter. So what we can do when we're in Unity, we, I'm just going to get rid of the directional light and I'm just going to set the environmental lighting to colour and I'm going to get rid of the skybox just so we've got a default colour in our background so we don't need to see anything else. You can get this entire project from Patreon and it will come with these items that I've included but all I've done here is I've created a circle in Photoshop which is 512 by 512 and that's what we're going to use as our indicator and I've set it as a Sprite 2D and UI and I've just got a sound effect of somebody drinking some water if you could hear that in the background that's all I've literally got but like I said you can find it on the Patreon if you're interested what we want to do is we want to right click and we want to go UI and we want to create ourselves a canvas so the canvas is going to hold what we want we'll go to the 2D mode we'll press F I will look at the entire canvas we can right click on the canvas go UI and choose image because we're going to want to display the image in the center of the screen so you can see it all down here and it's coming together. We'll just drag the image onto there. You can see it like so. I might just scale it up to 200 by 200 if, you know, it depends how you want it to be. I'm just going to take to untick Raycast target and then I'm going to set the image type to fill. And then as you can see, it's set to filled 360 radial and it currently fill the origin is the bottom. Now it will, would go a weird way. We don't want it to go like that. We want to start at the top and go clockwise. So what we need to do is we need to start it at the top. So you can see when we go back, it'll, it goes anti-clockwise. So we'll just untick the clockwise box and we will just move like so. And then there we have it. This is the way that we want it to go. And it's from a value of one and zero. So that's pretty much the UI created for this. So what we can do is start by writing our script. So we can right click, create C sharp, and we're just going to call this our radial indicator I'll just call it click and what we're going to want to do is we're going to at the top have a namespace of using unity engine dot UI then we're going to have using unity engine dot events with a semicolon because this is what we're going to need to reference we're going to need to use some unity UI elements and the actual elements for the events so we can start off by writing we need to create a timer so when we actually be able to click so what I'm going to do, square brackets, serialize field, private float, indicator, timer, set that equal to 1.0F, do the same, square brackets, serialize field, private float, max indicator timer equals the same. Then what we can do is below do the same, but we can do private image this time, and then we're going to reference our radial indicator UI and we'll set that equal to null and I only give them default values just so unity doesn't bring up any warnings which is annoying then what we can do is we're going to want to set a key or something that will activate the action that we're going to do so we'll say private key code and I'll just have this as call this select key and set it equal to key code dot mouse zero with a semicolon then the last thing is I'm just going to do serialize field private and I'm going to call this one a unity event and just call this my event set that equal to null and then I just added some quick headers to this just so that it'll look neater in the inspector when we go to look at it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a private bool and set this as to should update and set that equal to false at the start because should update is going to be whether we want to update it when we're doing something else so it stops in the update function that when we're looking for the to update the actual UI. We don't want it to do it if something else is going on. So this is the check that we need to use. But now below we can say void update with two brackets and then two curly brackets below. We'll say that if input dot get key. So in this instance, get key means if we're just holding it down. So in this case, we want to hold the key down to do our, um, our action. Then we'll put select key because we've already specified it up here. So we don't need to do 
a long reference. Then we can add two curly brackets below and then we will say that indicator timer minus equals time dot delta time with a semicolon. Then we'll write our radial indicator UI dot enabled is equal to true because we want it to be on off at the start. So we don't want to show it straight away, but we'll just set it as soon as we've clicked. Then we want to say that our radial indicator UI dot fill amount. So the fill amount is that value from naught to one. And we'll set that to the indicator timer because our indicator timer will only ever be a maximum of one and it will go down to zero. So that's great. That's set everything now. Now we need to say that if indicator timer is ever less than or equal to zero. In this case, it'll never be above one or less than zero. We can say the indicator timer is equal to the max timer. Because if we ever reach zero, we know we've got to the end. So we need to set it to its maximum again. So then we can count down for the second time. Then we'll say radial indicator UI dot fill amount is equal to the max of it again. So we reset the UI. Then we'll say that the radial indicator UI dot enabled equals false. So in this case, if it ever reaches it, we'll just set it off just in case that we let go of it at any point. And then in this case, we can then do my invent dot evoke because when we've hit the bottom and we've hold it, held it down for long enough, we're going to want to do some kind of event and that's perfect. What we need to do is once we've selected, we need to do something else when we've actually you know, we've let go of the key, what, what should we do? So we'll write else. So if we're not, so if we're not actually holding the key, we want to actually create this statement. We'll say that if should update. So in this case, we want to be using should update because we don't want um, it to be doing this top section when we're doing the bottom one or vice versa. So if should update is equal to true at the top here in our select key, we now should say should update equals false. So when we're actually left clicking, should update equals false. So this else statement can never happen if we've let go of the key. It can only do it when, we're, when we've actually reset this Boolean. So below here, we'll set two curly brackets. And similar to the top, we'll say the indicator timer. Now in this case is plus equals time dot delta time. And we'll say that radial indicator UI dot fill amount is now equal to the indicator timer as it ticks up. Then we'll have an if statement just like at the top. We'll say that indicator timer is ever than greater than or equal to the maximum indicator timer. Then we're going to want to do something else. We're going to say that indicator timer is equal to the maximum. We'll also say that the indicator UI dot fill amount is then equal to the maximum. Then we'll say that the radial indicator dot UI dot enabled equals false. So we want to turn it off and then we'll say that should update can then be false again because we don't need to do this anymore because we've reached the maximum value that it can possibly be. And then one last thing that we need to do below the last encapsulating statement of this else statement, we can say that if input dot get key up and then we can say in brackets select key. So if the select key is ever up at any point, we can say that should update is then equal to true because what this is doing here is it's saying that if we're left clicking and we're holding it down, we're setting this to false so we can never tick the object back up unless we let the key up to do it. Or let's say, imagine that when we'd started, when we'd started the game, we don't want to do any of this functionality because we're not clicking yet. So we set that, make sure that it doesn't happen. We'll tick down, we'll show it and we'll update it. If it ever reaches zero, we'll set the indicator to its maximum amount. We will set the actual fill amount to the maximum because we just need to reset it and then we can do our actual event. And then if there's anything else, we've let the key up, we can do this else statement and then we'll count back up. We'll fill the amount and if we ever reach the top, we just need to reset everything back to the maximum. So what we can do in here is on our image, we don't have to use the image, we can just right click create an empty game object, reset that and I'm just going to call this my radial indicator manager, let's say, and then I'm just going to add my script to there. You can see that the current timer is one, maximum timer is one. I'm looking for the actual 
UI, I'll just call this radial indicator UI just for reference sake. And we can just drag that straight into that slot. We've got mouse zero. We're looking for a unity event. So in this case, what we can do is just drag our sound effect into the unity scene that we've got. We can make sure that it's a 2D object. We don't want to play on awake. So we need to actually activate this object. So on our manager, we can just add another unity event and we can just go pop that in there. And we can just drop down audio source and we can just say play because the audio source has that um, built in. So audio source dot play that saves us actually having to write into this script or, you know, to reference our audio source, go audio source dot play. And this allows you to add multiple events that you could do when this happens. So it, is, it, it makes it much, so much easier to add multiple elements to the same thing. So essentially what we can test now is we can press play. We can left click. And if I let go, it goes back to the top and ends. You can see if I get to the end, you could hear my sound effect and it reset to the beginning as I wanted. And we can just do that for every other day as much as we want. A nice little script to control the input, to set whether we can or we can't do it. And you can use this for lots of different interactions if you need to. And like I said, in my on my Patreon, you can get access to the full project, which has an example of updating that it could be health, it could be a drink amount, and it just has some basic examples there. So this was the core example, just to show you, get you straight started into it without any extras. So be sure to check out my Discord, all my great assets on the Unity Store. And thanks again very much for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Cheers.